welcome to Vacation Station, hosted by Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazines.com. Big Bend National Park is a scenic area in West Texas where the Rio Grande River makes a large bend on the border between Texas and Mexico. Over 800,000 acres of mountains, valleys, and a wide variety of plants and wildlife are abundant in this beautiful national park in the Chihuahuan Desert of West Texas. The reward at the end of the Ross Maxwell Scenic Drive is the spectacular Santa Elena Canyon. A 1.7-mile trail takes you along the banks of the Rio Grande between two towering rock cliffs making up the canyon. In the early morning we were treated to the first light of day glistening on the water and upon the massive cliff sides of the canyon. The Ross Maxwell Scenic Highway is a very popular scenic drive that takes you to the always popular Santa Elena Canyon. This 31-mile drive is a wonderful way to view some of the majesty of the park from the comfort of your car. Some interesting stops along the Ross Maxwell Scenic Highway include Mule's Ears, Tough Canyon, Sam Nail Ranch, Homer Ranch, and the Lower and Upper Borough Falls Trails. The landscapes throughout the park are covered with cactus, yucca, ocotillo, prickly pear, bluebonnets, and other colorful native plants. Hot Springs near Basquias Canyon is a fascinating area that once was the location of a secluded resort on the Rio Grande. Lodging and facilities were available for those wanting to relax along the river and to enjoy the natural hot springs that flow from underground. The hot springs are still in use today. Basquias Canyon is located along the Rio Grande River in the far eastern part of the park. From the parking lot at Basquias Canyon there is a moderately difficult climb to a rocky outcrop with a wonderful view of the Rio Grande, where kayaks and canoes are often seen floating the river. Terlingua is a small town most famous for its annual World Chili Cook-Off Championship held the first week of November. In addition to a variety of lodging options, several excellent restaurants in Terlingua include DB's Rustic Iron Barbecue, Long Draw Pizza, and the legendary La Kiva, set to reopen in May of 2023. D.B. Rouse, the singing hobo, entertained us with some of his own tunes in addition to covers Bobby sang the blues Feeling good was good enough for me Marfa is a small town just north of the park. 
In addition to being a popular base for those visiting the Big Bend National Park, Marfa is well known for being the location for the filming of the classic 1956 movie Giant, starring Elizabeth Taylor, Rock Hudson, and James Dean. Marfa is also known for the Marfa Lights, an eclectic collection of artists and art galleries, and its scenic desert landscapes. Jet's Grill in the classy Hotel Paisano in one of the best restaurants in Marfa. The McDonald Observatory in Fort Davis is one of the best places in North America to view celestial body. Big Bend National Park is a spectacular piece of West Texas. Gorgeous landscapes, a wide variety of plants and wildlife, the majestic Rio Grande, glowing celestial bodies overhead in the dark skies, and so much more awaits you at Big Bend National Park. Hey, everybody, welcome to Big Blend Radio's second Friday food, wine, and travel show with the International Food, Wine, and Travel Writers Association, who we call IFTWA. It's a lot easier to say, and you can go to their website, ifwtwa.org. Every second Friday, we love it. We get to chat with travel writers and photographers and uh, chefs even and winemakers, um, everyone that is traveling. They come on this show every second Friday. We get to hear about their latest adventures and Scott Kendall is back on today. He's a travel writer and also editor of the site playstayeat.com. And I encourage you to go to his website. Um, he is joining us to talk about his adventures. Him and his wife, Julie, went to Big Bend National Park in West Texas. It's very timely. Uh, National Park Week comes up April 22nd through 30th this year. And um, Big Bend is iconic. I mean, we have over, what, 62, 63, uh, it keeps changing, parks, national parks within our National Park Service. Um, the National Park Service has over 420 parks, uh, including monuments. But um, Scott is based in Texas, so this wasn't too far away. To, well, Texas <laughs> is big. And uh, Scott, welcome back. How are you? Well, welcome, Lisa. Always uh, good to talk to you. You know, I love this. So we played for those who are watching on YouTube. You got to see Scott's video of his adventure. Very informative. Um, and if everyone goes to your website, playstayeat.com, then they're going to be able to uh, really get involved because you, you basically put a travel guide together for if you go to Big Bend with the towns where you can stay, where to eat, have good pizza, you know, oh. all that good stuff. And you even went to Fort Davis, which is cool, too. We, we did. I went up to Fort Davis and our intention was to go to the McDonald Observatory on Thursday night. But unfortunately, that was the one night that it was cloudy and rainy. And uh, so we had to cancel that. But we'll uh, we still got to see the dark skies on other nights, you know, and we just didn't get to look through the, the uh, big fancy telescopes. But we'll we'll do that another time. But it's a, a beautiful area. How far is it from you? Because you're near Dallas, right? And the woodlands. Well, we're, we're in the Houston <laughs> area. So it was about a nine hour oh. drive to uh, Alpine. And that's where we stayed for the first three nights. And then we stayed in Fort Davis, like you said, uh, the, the, the second two nights. So we were there for five nights total. Now, when you went through Marfa, did you tune into the local radio station and hear about not. the Marfa lights? Oh, my gosh. It's all cosmic, man. It's oh, man. <laughs> it's all about space and all kinds of good stuff. And did you see the Prada store in Marfa? The little we, uh, we we did not. Uh, we heard about it a lot. We saw pictures of it, uh, but we spent most of our time uh, downtown uh, mm. at the uh, El Pasano Hotel and uh, ate at Jet's Grill and went to the old courthouse and went to, to some of the art galleries. So it's a a really cool small town. Um, it's a uh, it's uh, so much history. So much history happens in that in that area, which is you know kind of desolate, really. But at the same time, once you get in there, you start realizing there's a ton that happened here, you know? 
Yeah, de they definitely have an intriguing history. It was fun to, uh, I know the, the movie Giant, I guess, was based out of Marfa and in that area. So the El Pasano Hotel is actually where the, the cast stayed. So uh, Cary Grant and Elizabeth Taylor and uh, James Dean all stayed at uh, the El Pasano in uh, Marfa. So that, that was kind of fun to see. Now, when you went into Big Bend, uh, the national park itself, um, I know you were right at the height of spring break, which is like when national parks get super busy, like Labor Day weekends and Fourth of July's. And I'm like, OK, Scott, what are you doing? But you also learned real quick, um, get out there first thing in the morning, which really is good advice for any park, I think, just to get yeah, out there I think, immediately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely during spring break, it is the, the busiest week for Big Ben because all the families that are headed out there, it's the middle of March, so the weather uh, usually cooperates. Um, so some of the more popular sites like uh, Santa Elena Canyon and uh, the Chisos Mountain Basin, uh, if you don't get there pretty early by 8.30 or so in the morning, they 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 block people from coming in. And then so uh, you just have to wait till people leave and then come back in. But fortunately, it's such a large park. Uh, you know, you always have your your plan B and your plan C. So if yep. they do close it to a, like we got to Santa Elena Canyon at eight in the morning, so we were fine there. But on the second day, we went to the Chisos Mount, uh, Mountain Basin and we got there about 830, thinking that would be early enough. And they had already closed uh uh, wow. road. So we ended up going to Los Basquilas uh, over in the Rio Grande village and spent most of the day there. And then we hit the Chisos Mountain Basin in the afternoon as, as people were leaving and uh, mm. thinning things out. So it still worked out, but yeah, definitely the more popular places uh, get there early. And, and Big Bend is also next to a Big Bend State Park, right? And both areas have huge Hollywood history. We've had the superintendent on our show and a local radio musician guy, um, I'm going to say at least 15 years ago on our show, and we had a ball and it just seemed like there was just so much more than what people realize in the history, but then the ruggedness. And um, also we talked about the safety of it because a lot of people get nervous about anywhere near a border. And I've, you know, we lived in Tucson and we've hiked the border areas a ton and we're here. <laughs> I just want to say we're right. here. Yeah. You know? I, and I, I think people that haven't been to Big Bend and you know, they do hear everything about the border being dangerous in certain areas. Uh, there wasn't even a second where my wife or I felt in danger at all. Now, driving there, my, my wife was a little bit worried, you know, because, you know, again, she had you know, seen the, the television shows about you know, the border and the violence. But uh, it's, it's actually uh, part of this on the Rio Grande, obviously, but mm -hmm. it's all a tourist area. And, you know, there's just people out there having a good time. You know, you don't see any signs of, you know, human smuggling or drugs or anything like that. And, and uh, it does obviously occur along the Rio Grande, but not in the areas that, that we were in and, and where the park is. Yeah, it seems that it's it, even the terrain doesn't make it work you know, for that. Yeah it, yeah, it would be tough to get across. Like the behind you, you have the uh, Santa Elena Canyon and trying to cross that and then <laughs> somehow getting over those cliffs. Uh, that'd be a pretty tough go. Yeah, that that's not going to quite happen without you being in broad daylight. I think smugglers like to go the other route, but you, you went out. I mean, this is such rugged terrain. And let's talk about that because, you know, being in the Houston area, I don't know why I thought you were up in Dallas area. I get it all messed up because Texas is so big. But yeah. um, you're a little more on the tropical side, I would say, versus the rugged side of West Texas. And West, right. we're yeah, in Lubbock yeah. right now, so we're above, I don't know how many hours above Big Bend, but um, we're blowing away. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, be I believe that. Uh, yeah, East Texas, you know, Southeast Texas around the Houston area, is it's, it's green, it's very flat. Uh, we get quite a bit of rain, uh, it's, it's fairly warm. And then once you get go west and get just west of San Antonio, that's when things start to turn more deserty and, you know, fewer, mm -hmm. less ve vegetation, less uh, humidity, less precipitation. Um, and by the time you get to Marathon and then Alpine and Big Bend, uh, yeah, they don't get a whole lot of rain there. 
Mm. And and yet you've got the river area and hot springs too. That was the other thing that I was like, I didn't know about the hot springs. Tell us about yeah, that. I, I didn't either. That was kind of a surprise. Uh, like so, that, that's one of the places we went after we couldn't get into the Chisos Mountain Basin. Uh, we looked at the map and we said, oh, there's hot springs here. So we drove over there and part of it, you're driving down an old gravel road that was mm, a bit bumpy. And uh, apparently uh, there used to be an actual resort right there on the Rio Grande and they still have the old stone buildings where they had the lodging oh, cool. and, and the, the the clubhouse uh oh, they cool. have some huge palm trees uh that obviously were brought in for the the resort uh but it was a popular resort there and uh there's some hot springs and I'm not sure exactly how it works geographically because the hot springs are right on the edge of the Rio Grande so they built a stone wall around the springs and so even today you can go in there and I, but I didn't go in the water, but I did touch it with my hand and it's just, you know, over a hundred degrees. It's, it is very warm, uh, but it, actually, it does empty into the Rio Grande. So, but it's warm right there. Cause I guess that's where it comes out of the earth and it's, it's nice and warm. There were probably a dozen people there uh, bathing, in, well, not bathing, but uh, in the, the hot springs and then another 50 or 60 that were just along the river and, uh, enjoying yeah isn't it always amazing to see these kind of these rivers right like the colorado river they're like the nile right going through the desert and it's just like wow just when you think there's you're so desolate it's so rugged how does anything grow here and they and it does like i think when you went it's the beginning of like ocotillo season where different plants start to bloom and um you know i don't know how much rain they got in west texas but a lot of some of the other areas in the southwest did get um I know Arizona got, I mean, Arizona is incredible right now, just wildflower wise. So um, I, I would, you know, get people, check it out on the website for Big Bend National Park for that kind of thing. But seeing the water, doesn't that just kind of blow your mind? Like how, like, how does this all work? You know, geologically. Exactly. One, one way you look and you see just desert and mesquite trees and yucca plants. And then you look the other way and uh, there are certain really green areas, like you said, depending on where the rain came in. And I, I think uh, Big Ben must have had uh, some good rains in the, the, the couple of weeks before we got there because mm -hmm. we saw tons of blooming yucca and uh, um, the, the Ocotillo. That's mm -hmm. my wife's new favorite flower. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? oh hummingbirds love it mm -hmm. oh yeah so we we saw oh. it. in fact if you look at the the video or my uh my article uh i have quite a few pictures of the the, the flowers blooming which again mm. I, I didn't i expected some here and there but they they were all over the place it's kind of like the yuccas come out and the ocotillos come out and um they always come out you have to have the, the water to make them really do it and they may come back the ocotillos in the fall but mm -hmm. um, it's really cool because they, like the yuccas have specific moths and um, butterflies that feed off of them. And if you don't, if they don't open, then the, those moths and, you know, butterflies are in trouble that year. But oh, then right. it goes in. So the desert has these stages. And so like the ground cactus will start to bloom depending on where, you, what desert you're in, but you're in the Chihuahuan desert. And I've driven through the area. It was a Memorial Day weekend. And boy, did we go through a monster storm and ended up pulled off the side of the road in Houston, your area, <laughs> in mm -hmm. the rain. But we had like a major hailstorm. Like it was, it was crazy, but at the same time, it was really cool. And then the second time we went through the area, we went through Guadalupe Mountain area. And you could see the Guadalupe oh. Mountain, but it was at night and it was a full moon. And it, we were going from actually Lubbock down to Tucson and we did this route. So for travelers, this is kind of a cool thing where you could do Carlsbad Caverns, Guadalupe uh, Mountains National Park, and and include Big Bend, especially for European tourists to come over, um, put Definitely. them all together. Yeah, in fact, it's funny you mentioned that. My brother-in-law and his wife joined us, and they act, they're from Wisconsin, and they actually oh, okay. flew, to, flew to El Paso, and they did the White Sands National Park. Oh, yeah, yeah, Park that's true, too, yeah. In Guadalupe, and then came to Big Bend, so they got four national parks uh, in like a, about a 10-day period. 
And Saguaro National Park's not that far away either. If you want to go into Tucson, there's Gila Cliff Dwellings National Monument. Fort Davis that you went to is also part of the National Park Service. Mm -hmm. um, actually, yeah, we had someone on the show from, from there too. It's just, you know, that's what I think is so fascinating. Here are these beautiful natural areas, and then all of a sudden, yeah, here's a fort and stuff went down. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> you know, so I think there's, and there's more in Southern, South, I mean, as I keep thinking about where you were, you could spend two, three weeks and never finish. Oh, you de know? definitely. Yeah, I, I could have spent that much time probably just in Big Bend. You know, it's, it's yeah. over 800,000 acres. So there's a, a lot of area to cover. Yeah. And so did you do any hikes? Get out there and stomp we, the we ground? We did. Um, you know, we were only there for like two full days in the park. I mean, we were in the area for five days, but uh, we did a, a five mile uh, walk. I think it, it was the uh, Mule Ears. And uh, that's that a fun, uh, there's a couple of mountains and they kind of form ears like on a, on a mule. And so it's mm -hmm. mule ears. And that was a, I think they said that was a moderately challenging uh, hike. Uh, and there were several others that were you know, uh, four or five miles. Uh, went on some like real short ones. Uh, Santa Elena Canyon Trail was uh, 1.7 miles. So that was mm -hmm. a, a fairly short one. There's a couple of areas where you have to scramble up and down some rocks. But um, the one thing I loved about Big Bend is you can find almost anything that you're comfortable with at your level. You know, if, oops, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> our, our, our back, my, my bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, you're here. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, uh, yeah, about the different hikes, the hiking trails that, right. that that's the thing. I think the national park service does really well because they even have trails that are for, you know, accessibility wise. Like if you're in a wheelchair, some places, some parks will have that or for moms pushing a stroller or dad's pushing a stroller, that kind exactly. of thing. They seem to seem to really try at least have a good scenic drive as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of the, the park we did see just from driving through, and then uh, as I said we went on four or five hikes. And uh, another good way to see the park is uh, canoes or kayaking, which we, we did not do, but we saw quite a few people uh, kayaking down the river. And uh, you know, just a, it's a nice leisurely uh, water. So there's not I we didn't see any white water, you know, nothing really rapid. Just a nice, calm, slow uh, flow. Nice. Now, did you get a chance to see any wildlife? Um, not a lot. Uh, we saw mm -hmm. some some lizards. Um, and we oh, just that's see, cool, though. Yeah, we saw, I think it was a raven. It was a, a black bird. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody I was with said it was a raven. And I'm, I, I think that's what it was. Um, saw a few birds here and there. Um, and uh, but, you know, I didn't see any jackrabbits, no bear, no deer, you know, no, no large. Yeah, rabbit. you have to. It depends on the time of day and where you go, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you were like at six in the morning at the water, you probably would see some, you know, mm -hmm. it just depends. And it, yeah, it's such a big park. When you look at the maps, you did a good job showing us in the video. And then everyone again, uh, you know, playstayeat.com. If you go there, you'll be able to see, you know, just what, you know, Scott's talking about. And I mean, the animals do get food and they have, you know, it just doesn't look like they're going to have a lot of food out in the desert, but they do, you know, it's, it's pretty wild, but it seems like you guys got good food. You got good pizza. We did. Uh, so actually, some of the best pizza I've ever had. And, you know, that's not something I was expecting wow. out in the, in the middle of the desert. But, yeah, we went to a long draw pizza in Terlingua. And Terlingua is mm -hmm. a very interesting community. It's a, an old ghost town. It started as a, a mining town. Uh, they mined mercury and some other, other minerals. And uh, then basically wow. that went away. And there's a, just a few hundred people that kind of stayed on. And, and now, of course, the biggest industry is tourism. Um, so mm -hmm. there are several several good restaurants. Uh, the Long Draw Pizza, uh, we loved and found out that they are the people that own Long Draw Pizza. Uh, Mallory and Andy Mundy are actually reopening La Kiva. And La mm. Kiva is like a, the probably the most famous uh, legendary bar and restaurant in Terlingua. And it was in existence for about 30, 40 years. Uh, and there was a murder mystery. The owner uh, was killed Ooh. back in 2014. 
uh, interlingua uh, at the restaurant. And so that that made headlines. And um, so anyways, after uh, the death of uh, the owner, uh, they sold it. They kind of did some reconstruction. And uh, but then it went out of business during COVID. So it's been mm. been closed for a while. Uh, but uh, Mallory and Andy are opening it back up in May of 2023. So that would be something exciting to look for uh, if you yeah. do, uh, after that time. Wow. There's, you, there's always scandal around murders, you know. Always, it's, always. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they were listening to that, you know, the Marfa Lights uh, radio show where you can beam up. <laughs> It is. It's all. It, it's kind of like listening to Art Bell in a weird way, <laughs> but not Art Bell. Yeah, yeah, in a weird way. <laughs> but yeah. Well, there's like you know when you were going to go to the observatory, but they they always talk about the Marfa lights, and um, it's just it's an interesting area. So, what was Alpine like? Because I've been through Fort Davis, and when we were in Alpine, it was at night, and we went through Marfa, and I remember them having some parties. There's like a there was like a party going on in some saloon kind of. It, they, were, yeah, well, it, they were having a good time. That's all I'm going to yeah, say. Yeah. Well, Alpine's a, a college town. There's actually Sol Ross University. And so, yeah, there are quite a few places where I think the college kids hang out and the locals, mm -hmm. too, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, so uh, we we were in a, a fairly quiet part of town. We didn't hear a lot of parties. Uh, but we did go out and we ate at uh, Riata uh, restaurant, mm -hmm. which is uh, one of the top rated uh, restaurants in Alpine. And uh, went to there's a, a museum of the Big Bend in uh, on Sol Ross University campus. Oh, okay. And that, and that was very interesting because it kind of gave you a good background. Uh, in fact, a lot of the information we saw at the Big Bend Museum in Alpine, we also saw at the Fort Davis Museum. Um, okay. Because you know they talked about some obviously some of the same history that uh, mm -hmm. happened in that area. Oh, there's a lot of interesting history at fort davis i that's got some there's some scandals in there too as i recall oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah definitely yeah, if you're a, <laughs> if you're a history buff uh it's a, a fun thing to to read about and just uh you know all the, the things that you know didn't make the you know probably you didn't study it in your history class but you know it, it, it's very interesting and uh you know just uh I, i've always loved to learn little facts and you know, things that happened yeah. that we we didn't know about didn't they have the Buffalo soldiers going through there? I think they did. Yeah, I think that's where they they originated, and and mm -hmm. and most of the the soldiers there for a period of time were the Buffalo soldiers. Mm -hmm. Well, I need to get back there. I I think Texas is so fascinating. There's so much history, and it's such a huge state. It's you guys have like your own country going on here, you know, well, history wise. We really do. Yes. So sometimes when we go overseas or somewhere, it's kind of like, well, yeah, I mean, it's cool to see other places, but yeah, there's still quite a few places in Texas that we really haven't seen. Mm. So we're going to. Yeah. Well, what led you to say, I'm going to go to Big Bend Park. Last time you were on the show, we were talking about Europe. It just opened up and you've gone to Paris and Switzerland, the top of the world. And, you know, going on a, a wonderful ride in the uh, Paris canals with champagne and, you know, and I'm yeah. now, now you're in Big Bend. I'm like, okay, this is like complete opposites in, yeah. in, in well, some ways. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a complete opposite, and I think it just goes to show that you know, there's you know, no matter what your tastes are, there's so many interesting places, you know, whether it's you know, in your your home state or you know, across the pond in Switzerland or Paris or or wherever. Um, and uh, I, I just have always wanted to go to Big Ben, and you know, I've heard a lot of people that do go always had great things to say about it, and so finally. Uh, one day I was talking to my wife and said, well, I'm going to go to Big Ben. Do you want to go with me? <laughs> and that's uh, cool. And uh, luckily she she was able to work it out uh, with her schedule, uh, her, her teaching schedule. And uh, mm -hmm. so we went for a week and had a great time. So would you go back? I would. I would. Yeah, okay. I, there, there's there's a few places like the Chusos Mountain Basin. You know, we spent maybe a couple of hours there and uh, we didn't really go on any longer hikes in there because we our time was very short uh definitely want to do that and uh just there's uh, other trails that i'd love to walk and go back to long draw pizza go to uh, db's rustic iron barbecue uh that Ooh. was a really really good food also and then um jet's grill in the hotel pisano where giant was filmed uh that was a uh, also an excellent restaurant so mm -hmm. um 
lots of good food. Uh, there was live music at a lot of the the, uh, the restaurants, which was kind of fun because I guess you have all these tourists come from wherever. And uh, at Long Draw Pizza, there was a guy named D.B. Rouse. Uh, he's known as the singing hobo. And, oh, cool. Uh, and he, he sang a lot of his own songs and did some covers of uh, me and Bobby McGee uh, sitting on the dock of the bay, you know, uh, uh, circle of, uh, oh, what's that, Johnny Cash? Uh, oh, like Walk the Line and oh, uh, Ring of Fire. Ring of Fire, yes. Yeah, yes, yes. yeah, uh, cool. Yeah, so it, it was fun. And yeah, I'd definitely go back and I'd like to see La Kiva when, when it reopened because I had never been there when it was yeah. you know, before it was uh, closed. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely go back to Big Bend. I think there's so much to see. I think there always is. You you can never do all the hikes you want to do. And it's just always you can plan all you want. But travels never in, no, nothing ever goes according to plan. That's just the way life is. Right. Um, exactly. You know, yeah. it goes. But um, I definitely want to go. And I want to I, that whole area to me, like I was saying, is fascinating. Where would you recommend people stay when they go there? Well, it, it, it all depends. I think ideally I would stay in Terlingua because that's the closest to Big Bend. And uh, there's also a lodge uh, in the Chiso Mountain Basin. Uh, so th th that, that'd be my number one choice. It was actually closed for it's being remodeled and I'm not sure oh. what's going to reopen. Um, so I checked the website for that. So the, the lodge in Chiso Basin, Terlingua. Terlingua has a lot of like fun little places like uh, teepees and, you know, little bed and breakfast. Uh, they have oh, a, cool. a bunch, bunch of uh, uh, just unique uh, bed and breakfast that would be fun to stay at. And again, you're closer to Big Ben, so you don't have to drive quite as much. Uh, Alpine and Marathon are also uh, and, and Marfa are good choices, but then you're going to have like an hour and a half just to drive into the park. Uh, and we really didn't mind that because it was a, a beautiful drive anyway. Um, so, um, but Trilingua or the, the Mountain Lodge would probably be my first choice. That sounds good. I mean, um, you know, going there, going back, getting some hikes in that you haven't done, maybe getting in the water. That's, I want to go kayaking. You can kayak in there, right? In the, in the yes, Rio yes. Grande. Yeah, and there's a that. place called uh, Far Flung Adventures, and they're mm -hmm. one of the places where they have the guided uh, trips, but they also oh. rent uh, kayaks and canoes. So it depends on whether you want a, a guided trip or you want to just do it on your own. I think the guided trips are kind of cool because you get that history of where you are and knowledge and you know if you see a rattlesnake they'll know what to do maybe more <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you are in texas you know i'm just saying you know That's so i think it, it, you know it's nice and big but I, I like i said i love that whole that there's like such a route that people can do all these other experiences as well go there go to guadalupe mountains because now you're getting into an area where they do get snow and guadalupe mountains is kind of like um the great basin national park that is so under visited and yet has like a four season thing going there that uh, people mm -hmm. don't expect. And so I right. really want to do that and put the two together as destinations. But your family coming in from Wisconsin, I mean, it's not far from El Paso. It's a little bit of what, three, four hour drive, maybe. It's about um, a four or five hour drive. from yeah. El Paso. No, not too bad. But I mean, we were just in Wisconsin and the very north part of Wisconsin on the Tomahawk River. Like oh, my phone kept going to Canada and I'm like, what? Um, I don't speak that. No, who <laughs> is telling you it's minus 40 degrees centigrade? I'm like, oh, wait, we're Fahrenheit. You're freaking me out. It's cold and I'm falling in snow. Everything's frozen. I felt like I was on the set, the, t the movie set of Fargo because everything was frozen on ev everywhere we looked, but there were bald eagles. It was beautiful. So for them, that had to be, I don't know where they are in Wisconsin, but that time of year coming out to the Southwest had to be night and day like it difference. was totally different and they're they're from kind of the green bay area but they also have oh, okay. a cabin up in north wisconsin probably not too far from where you were yeah, yeah. and that's good i mean they were getting snow in green bay when we were there and um that had to be i think they're still getting snow <laughs> yeah they, they almost didn't want to go back they they said well maybe we'll stay in texas a little longer a little warm get that sunshine you know what i mean and right. and this park is four seasons that's something i want to tell people and, and i think again it's like go out really early in the morning catch the sunrises go out towards sunset and really the the desert is magical and there there are things to experience year round it's just how you do it 
Exactly. And and one word about uh, the weather um, in the summer, it gets really, really mm -hmm. hot. And so if you do go during the summer, like you said, go very early in the morning, make sure you have plenty of water, you know, don't go on any long, long uh, trips because uh, it can be 110 degrees or, or hotter. And there are certain areas where you don't have access to, to water or shade. And uh, so just, you know, be, be smart about it, but uh, it's, it's beautiful all four seasons. And they get monsoon rainstorms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is the coolest. I love those. That is the drama of the desert that people miss out because a lot of people don't think of going in the summer. And I get it, but it is magic. If you can witness a monsoon, just kaboom through the desert. And I've, it's almost like the ocean coming across the desert mm -hmm. Oh yeah, through the yuccas. It's magic. So I hope people go. Well, thank you, Scott. It's always a pleasure having you on the show. Again, everyone, Scott's website is playstayeat.com. He is a travel writer uh, through the International Food Wine Travel Writers Association. We did put up a page with a short write-up about his adventures, some photos and video, and you can click through and read that and all the links over to his website um, regarding uh, Big Bend National Park. Um, but I also want to give a shout out to IFTWA, the International Food Wine Travel Writers Association. If you go to their website, ifwtwa.org, if you're a travel writer, photographer, or destination, they have an awesome conference coming up in October, their conference at sea. I think that's going to be cool. You can I float think so on too. A, uh, Princess Cruises. Are you going? I, I am. Yes. yes. Oh, so cool. I'm from Vancouver to Victoria and then down to San Francisco. And uh, it, it should be, be a lot of fun. Have you gone to their conferences before? Uh, yeah, I went to the one in uh, St. Petersburg in Florida last year. Cool. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, so they 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 put on a good show and a lot 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 of lot of fun people. To, you know, a lot of people you kind of sort of meet through the the internet, through Facebook and whatever. So so nice to you know see people in person and actually you know spend some time sharing stories and just getting to know each other. And the, from my experience with Iftwa, the travel writers actually help each other. They do, yeah. you know, like hey, you're going here. Here's a contact and check this out. I mean, is that something you've experienced too? Oh yeah, d d definitely. You know, we're always talking to each other and, you know, do you have any recommendations or do you know so-and-so or um, yeah. So yeah, it's definitely a, a really a tight knit uh, group and a lot of us have known each other for years. So uh, yeah, it's a, a very uh, not only fun, but it's also very informative and very useful. Mm, cool. Where is your next destination? Uh, well, we're going to Ireland uh, in May. Awesome. Uh, so we're excited about that. We have most of our plans made. We're flying to Dublin, uh, going down to Killarney, doing the, the Ring of Kerry, the Dingle Peninsula. Uh, then we're going over to Doolin and the Cliffs of Mower and Galway, uh, listen mm. to some traditional Irish music and probably nice. drink some Irish beer. Uh, yeah, James no, Guinness and, and Guinness, yes, and, and Dublin, I, yeah, Irish coffees. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're we're going to be busy, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be a fun time. But uh, driving on the wrong side of the road is the only thing that's going to be a bit of a challenge. But uh, we've done that in England before, so I, I, you know, we'll, we'll manage. Yeah, you know, it's a little smaller than Texas too, so that uh, mm -hmm. just a tad, you just know. A tad. You can do it. You can do it. You've got it. You've got it. Well, have I'm, fun. I'm, yeah, you just have to convince my wife. <laughs> oh, oh, it's just, it's so it sounds like she doesn't like the driving part of it of the destinations. Once you get there, you're okay. But yeah, on the way, I, 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 that's yeah. It's on yeah. the way. It's like okay, but yeah, going on the other side because you do. I mean, I grew up in South Africa and Kenya and England, mm. and then even just as a pedestrian. Like if I talk to my friends, you know, over in South Africa, my brain takes a few years. As you get older, this happens. Your brain starts to go and revert. And then I don't even know how to pronounce things half the time because now <laughs> I've gone off for cons. And then if I, you know, go to cross the street, I'm looking the wrong way. You know what I mean? And it's, right. whenever you take a left turn, for some reason, I could go completely in the wrong lane. And I've done that. I did it. I, I met my best friend up in Michigan last year. And on our way out of Michigan, I took a left and I went into the oncoming traffic off wow. of an interstate thing. And I'm well, like, don't do that again. <laughs> I know. And this is looking at me. I went, oh, my gosh, I went South African. It just because of seeing her. Sure. So it's it just takes that little bit of time. But um, 
hopefully I'll get younger and, and smarter. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is. Let All me know right, how, every... you, how you do that. <laughs> I know. I love it. Everyone, please keep up with us at bigblendradio.com. Again, we are here every uh, second Friday with Iftwa. And then we also have a second Tuesday show, a third Monday show where we talk with destinations. So a lot going on uh, in the world of travel. And it's so exciting that travel is back open up. And uh, also, don't forget to plan your adventures for a uh, National Park Week coming up again, April 2nd, 22nd through 30th. So thanks so much, Scott. You take care. Well, thank you, Lisa. You too.